There I was, lost in blue. In Project Zomboid, just off the north coast of Knox, there's a small island called Kingsmith, upon which I stranded myself to see if I could survive and navigate my way back home to the mainland. This challenge invites resourcefulness. To me, a survival island is an invitation to confront the bare realities of our nature that drive us every day, and learn to surmount daunting obstacles with greater ease. If I made it out, I would prove my worth and metal with new skills and fresh ideas. I called to mind the confrontations I expected to face, and hardened my resolve as I dove into a new unknown. I endeavored to create a character for this challenge capable of clinging by the nails to any rare boon of resources I might expect to find on the island. Quiet and nimble, but also quick to catch on and learn new skills. The traits I settled upon were Restless sleeper, slow healer, underweight, hard of hearing, short-sighted, and slow reader. The positive traits are more key here. Cat's eyes, dexterous, outdoorsman, inconspicuous, and athletic, as well as a fitness instructor profession. These would keep me mobile and quiet, quick to slip in and out of dangerous situations. I dubbed him Ulysses, in honor of the Greek's wiliest, craftiest warrior. I spawned into the starter house. Before we start looking for a ship, we need to make sure we'll survive long enough to do that. That means we have a few other urgent tasks to carry out. Out. I closed the curtains, though I couldn't entirely seal the house. Best to keep a secret now. The first task was to find a weapon. A kitchen knife would do, but I'd need more. Can opener, matches, and a lot of canned food, along with some bullets which might come in handy. I turned on the TV and I switched to life and living, but no programming was on. I'd found a weapon, a griddle pan I could use to bash them, but I'd need to clear and protect my immediate area. Maybe even find a two-story house in which I could sleep at nightfall. At least be quiet around here and come back. Then it was just a matter of food, water, and shelter. Only once I'd found those things could I begin my search for a ship. The yard was clear, but I could attract the attention of one of them, thin out the numbers. That was one. A safety vest for extra layers, as well as some boots to cover my feet. Dispatching a few more, I decided that the initial house was safe. I tried to attract a little bit more attention, and I cleared the area. The house was safe. Though... Perhaps a mess. As I ventured in the neighborhood, my stats increased. I got a little bit better at being stealthy and quiet. Time well spent now because there would be larger hordes later on. I found a watch on one body. I knew it was October, but I didn't know what time it was. 12.20 p.m. With plenty of time left in the day, I stayed inside. I knew it would be a longer struggle if I wanted to get off this island, so I dug in my heels and set up a base camp here. I grabbed all the household furniture, and I blocked all the nearby doors with it. I also practiced being stealthy or violent. Whatever the situation called for, I found a better digital watch. October the 15th and 54 degrees outside. I kept improving and being stealthy. But around mid-afternoon, I decided I needed a backup plan, and I looked to the other nearby house for just that. This called for a better weapon. I did some foraging in the nearby woods to find a large branch. There it was. I could use this to make a spear, and so fashioning the spear, I attached it to my back. Now I had just what I needed to keep them at a greater distance. It was everything I needed it to be, except it broke really quickly. I fashioned more spears, fought the dead, and made my way into the second house. A fallback point. It would work. And then the alarm went off. And so close to nightfall, I fled the area. All my plans had fallen through. The best I could do was walk off into the woods. Not good. This was very bad. I did manage to hop a fence, dispatch one with a duffel bag, and run off with the bag in hand. If I was smart here, I could lose all of them in one shot. So I hopped yet another fence, and lost them all in the tennis courts. I stole away back into the woods. Gone was all my progress from the first house. With my weapons broken, I simply had no better plan than run away quietly. I'd be winded and tired that night, weary from a day of fighting and avoiding the dead, only for it all to be in vain. But all wasn't lost. I switched back into my sneakers and ran away. Being light-footed would do more for me here than being strong. And after a little searching, I found an office building, some cans of soda to keep me awake, and I was able to break line of sight for long enough. With lots of windows, I was food on display, but at least I could see them before they came to me. There were also a lot of books in this place. I could use these to learn more about the ships and cars I'd need to repair along the way. I found one pamphlet on generators, a pair of scissors, and conflict, but that was enough for one day. Now I was tired. As luck would have it, there was a maintenance room in that office building. I found an axe, some nails, a saw, a flashlight, some duct tape, and I was able to quietly remove a chair from another part of the building and bring it back in there to sleep. At least there were no windows and I was safe. A whole day had passed. What had I accomplished? 
Sure, I had lost my initial shelter, but yet doubtlessly I had improved, and I was growing ever stronger, quiet, and more deadly by the minute, able to slip in and out of tight spaces and accomplish my objectives with greater ease than on day one. I slept that night flooded with new learning, yet still laser-focused on doing whatever I could to escape the island the next day. When I woke up, it was raining, and I noticed that my new home was right on the water. This would be an opportunity to search for ships nearby. I made my way down the hall, and I found the employee break room. Being underweight, I decided to eat whatever was left in here. A feast of tuna, yogurt, and spaghetti bolognese. I also decided to read the books on mechanics and electricity. While I had a rare moment of peace, I knew it would be rare to find a good vehicle, so I learned what I could while I was here. I ate a burger and a lot of ice cream, I washed myself, and I found one more duffel bag. This was rare and important. More storage space, and I could travel like a turtle with my home on my back. There in the quiet of my room on the second day, I finished the book on mechanics. Not much else to do, and since it was still raining at 7.20 p.m., I thought it best to stay inside. I microwaved a chicken breast since there was no oven to be seen, and that would suffice for more calories. Being ridiculously tired, I turned in at only 8.30 p.m. I'd wake up early and hopefully take advantage of the morning fog to move around. Unable to sleep, I'd need to search today for a better bed. It would hamper me in combat and I couldn't keep going on like this. So at the crack of dawn, I made my way out of the office building. And in the morning rain, I made my way out onto the pier to look for boats and cars. I found some shotgun shells, some glue, a metal pipe, and fortunately a wrench, which would help with fixing car jack, trowel, duct tape, and a welder mask for a bit more protection. With the building separating me from the mainland, and a few gas pumps still working on the docks, I figured this would be a good place to set up for where I would eventually leave the island. If anything was out of gas, I could just bring it here. All I had to do was keep the main building clear. More of them were coming every day, but attempting to win that battle was just fool's play. Though instead, I stored my items away near the storage crate and walked off. If you want to become self-reliant, you first need to master your own movements. I made it my main ambition to train myself in the art of stealth. If I was going to get off of this island, I'd need to do it quietly. I could safely train while behind a chain link fence, and yet separated by a considerable distance. By the late morning, I was becoming very, very sneaky. Just beyond the chain link fence were a police station and a few cars in a parking lot. I investigated. I met only one that I quickly dispatched. So far, I was safe all the way into the parking lot. And there it was. I didn't know what kind of condition it was in, and I couldn't get to it right now, certainly. But it was an opportunity at escape. I entered some of the cars. One had a key and a little bit of gasoline. After that, I made my way over. What kind of condition was it in? Calling over one police, but being careful just to draw a few. This was good fortune. Experience, a police jacket, and even a pistol for my troubles. Not that I would be using it anytime soon. Took out a few more in the parking lot. Due to good planning, I was able to clear the ship in just a couple of hours. Unfortunately, I'd need to tow it if I wanted to see anything about its condition. For the last few, I used unconventional warfare. This basically just meant doing reverse donuts in the parking lot. Strategy. That was enough to dislodge the ship. Or so I thought. I needed a new plan. I grabbed what I could. There was a revolver and a shotgun on the police officer I had just downed. I used all of this. After I cleared out enough of the parking lot, I could quietly make my way into the police station. It had more weapons and defenses might even make a better base. It also had a second floor, which was invaluable to me. The rooftop helipad might not be useful for its standard traditional uses, but it could be functional for an escape. The armory, however, was occupied. Not for long. There, I discovered... A treasure hoard. This place had everything. Anything you could want, it was here. And while I couldn't use much of it because it wasn't suppressed, I could still use a lot of this in a pinch. It'd be loud, but it'd get the job done. And night vision goggles would also help. With that, I quietly made my way back over to the dock. That was enough for one day. I didn't have anything else to prove. I escaped with what I had found and I was safe and lucky to be alive. Above all else, the night vision goggles were the most valuable. I could use these if I wanted to move around in the dark undetected. At last I looked the part of a survivor. Mobile, equipped, and highly utilitarian. I loaded up my magazines and I got ready to go back out. As night fell, I made my way back out. Another chance to sharpen my skills and delve deeper into the island for more supplies before my escape. As luck would have it, I found an axe. Sure enough, night is dark, but night vision goggles are kind of cool. I was able to use this to sneak around more, and rack up more kills, pretending I was Sam Fisher all the while. Using all of this, I was able to sneak my way back over to the warehouse. There is one thing that could dislodge the boat. The area was clear and quiet. I made my way in. I could take them out one-on-one -on -one in the night, though, and I felt pretty safe doing so. But then they all started coming. 
Not much time left. I used the night against them by escaping into the dark. They'd be attracted only to their own noises. This was safe for now. Don't question it. Fighting off the last few, I admit I got pretty lucky here. A sledgehammer was just what I needed to get this thing unstuck. And so in the middle of the night, with the moon as my witness, I freed the ship. And I budged it clear. Now it was time to have a look inside. The ship turned out to be in pretty good condition despite all the things I had done to it. But it was too late and I still wasn't very well equipped and hungry from the day. I decided to head back into the main building I had cleared before. They say the evil you know is better than the evil you don't know, and I wasn't about to take a chance in an unknown location. To give myself an even bigger advantage, I decided to turn off the lights in the facility. That way I could see, but they couldn't. Thoroughly exhausted and out of breath, I destroyed my axe. I turned in for the night only in the wee hours of the morning. I rested easy, knowing that my escape was in sight. What had I done? What had I accomplished? In a phrase, self-reliance. But the best was still yet to come. I woke up on day five groggy, but now determined to give myself a final place to rest. I would still rely on stealth or violence, whatever the situation called for. In the morning, I found a suppressor for my pistol and a tool shed. It wasn't perfect, but it did work. And it might help me with any unforeseen enemies as I towed the boat. In fact, it did come in handy. I wasn't Sam Fisher, but it wouldn't be long. There was only one last thing I'd need. A tow rope. After some conflict, I decided to be a bit louder. I'd work with a hatchet. I wanted to get off this island. So I started the car, and I drove away from the sound of the fighting. Fortunately, the noise radius wasn't so high, and I was able to get out of there. It wasn't easy to get out of there, and ultimately, I could have been more careful. But let me tell you, I'd had it up to here with that island, and I was feeling ready for a well-deserved rest. I used the ship and the car in the last way I thought that they could be useful to me on land. As it turns out, eight wheels are better than four, and ships are very heavy. And then my wheels went out. I I took out the rest of the zombie horde, leveled up in shooting, and at long last, somehow got that car to the sea. Don't question it. After a couple of hours of dragging my car along the ground, even if there was a good chance it wouldn't work, apparently I was missing three out of four tires. Not good. I performed the tire change, effortlessly, by taking tires off of other cars, a process I called tire arbitrage. I installed the last of the tires, but only very late at night. It took me long enough. After a whole night of tinkering with the boat, I was ambushed. But at long last, I was able to launch it onto the water. I made it on, but I wasn't in yet. I still had to add gasoline. At long last, it was time to leave the island. I was queasy from all of the dead bodies around me, or so I conjectured. Finally, I managed to get into the cabin with a crowbar. I got to the controls, I turned on the lights, and I now had a new home at least. I could sleep safely. I spent some time in the boat reading, along with some much needed repair work on some nearby cars. I bade a fond farewell to the island. And with that, I boarded the boat, made my way into the helmsman's seat, and hot-wired the engine. The boat was mine. I made my way away from that island in the fog. There were still so many left there on the shore. I was comfortably out of reach and safe at last. And while the mainland was still a ways away, I took pride in the fact that I had overcome Kingsmith. Now it was off into the mists. Off beyond the vacation homes, the quiet, foreboding loneliness of the island. It was back out into the ocean. I was bound for new adventures and different shores. I had survived the island. To me, my escape demonstrated that we can increase our resolve and flourish by endeavoring to encounter stress and not only cope with, but seek out challenges that set us off to discomfort. Anything that invites physical, mental, or spiritual anguish, or even desolation, is an opportunity to cultivate the strength of one's faculties. But rather, we should seek out opportunities at stress and anxiety, to confront our weaknesses, our desolation even, and in so doing, we will as a result be better equipped to confront the stresses and challenges of our own lives. So that's what I take out with me from this into the real world. Games can play out like microcosms of our own lives and make us better if we confront them with such greater mindfulness. And then I finally arrived. Mainland and safety. Shut off the boat, dropped anchor, and swam to the land. At long last, I was safe again and I could leave that cursed isle behind. For me, that's the reality. Whether or not it is for you, I hope you enjoyed. As always, a major thanks to my patrons. They help make all of this possible. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. And to viewers like you, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until we meet again.